12 team fantasy football mock draft for the weirdos out there this one goes out to y'all it is august 19th it is august 21st and we're ripping through a 12 teamer i got the 104 and i know i have the 104 because this draft is based off the big dog bash you've never seen me wear headphones before I don't wear headphones during my videos. These are doing literally nothing right now, but this Tony's out in the main room of the office right now, absolutely fucking yelling on TikTok. He's live right now, and this motherfucker's so loud. I can't hear, I can't even hear my own brain right now. So this is the 12-teamer. I've got the four pick. This is a mock draft based on the Big Dog Bash. The Big Dog Bash is right now looking like a 600-person league slash tournament that we, BDGE, are putting together. Hella prizes. Lots of your favorite content creators are in it. The grand prize being 10,000 shares of our company, BDGE. This is the very, very, very last day to get into it. If you want to play in the Big Dog Bash, if you want to play against all the BDG team members, there are going to be, I think, 50 leagues we got filled up right now. Weeks 1 through 12 is the regular season. If you come out of your league as the champion, you move to the Bash, which is the final five weeks of the season, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. If you are in the top half of the highest scoring teams that have moved on from their regular season, you move on week by week by week until there is one champion crowned. The top two teams Teams left the top two players are getting flown out to New York City. We're going to watch the games together. This is going to be the most electric fantasy football league of all time. So we are mocking for it today. The last day to buy it is today, literally tonight, Sunday, August 21st. The drafts happen next Sunday. If you want to sign up, link will be in the description. As far as our giveaway winner, because this is an NFT, we just gave the capability to buy this via credit card. You don't have to go through Coinbase or Ethereum. We said anybody who does it via credit card will be entered into a free giveaway because you could mint up to two passes so you can draft in two leagues, twice the chances of prizes, twice the chances to draft against us. The winner is... M Bradley, but the A is with an X. M B R X D L E Y is already in the Discord, so we will reach out to him via that. Congratulations, my friend. You are doubled up. You are duped the fuck up. All right, y'all listen to me yell enough. Let's get into the draft. We're already filled up. This is literally filled in six seconds. Pause. Let's get it. So again, I'm from the 104. I already have my draft spot in the bash because we did it on a live stream last week where we randomized our picks. And I've been fucking around with a lot of strategy. I'm someone who's usually yelling about running back early, running back often. The settings for this league are... Half PPR, but it is a super flex league. You're likely starting two quarterbacks, almost definitely starting two quarterbacks. Three wide receivers start, two flexes, half PPR. I'm not someone who typically fades running backs early, but the more I've drafted, the more I've liked my team when I've started with a quarterback because I like having flexibility in the middle rounds. If you don't go with a quarterback early in these super flex drafts, you end up having to force yourself into mid-tier quarterbacks that kind of stink. So I'm going to surpass C-Mac. And this is not necessarily saying I love Mahomes here, but I will take whatever quarterback at the top for the most part right now. We'll see if JT drops to me. You know, maybe I'll change my mind and go with Justin Jefferson or something here. But I've really I've done enough mocks now where I've liked my team when I've started with the quarterback. I, uh, I I'm getting more and more into the idea that this Chiefs team, I just I don't know if Mahomes can fail based on the fact that they don't have a fucking running back. They don't have a running back that they can trust to run the ball with. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have a single game this year with a runner that goes over 100 rushing yards. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think they they want to run the ball whatsoever. I think this is a team that's going to pass the ball at a rate of like 70%, something that's like unheard of. Wow, all right, we're already timing out on the first pick. FF and Bruce, what, what a schlub. This thing filled up in six seconds when I dropped the link in the Discord. So we have run over 160 mocks, I want to say, based on bash settings within the Discord. And someone was awesome enough to put together, oh, we can't give away my strategy there. Someone was awesome enough to put together ADP based on this. So you're going to have a lot more accurate ADP. This is in the official links in the Discord. If you want to hop in the Discord, uh, that will be down below. It's obviously free to get in there. Um, so I've been trying to look at like realistic picks I can make 104, these are, this is ADP, not guys I'm targeting. So I have the 104, I have the 209. Uh, sorry, I didn't actually change all the numbers, but this is the 304, the 409. So I've been looking at realistic starts based on the way these leagues have been drafting. And again, I just I think it sets me up for a, a better middle round of drafting. RY Dog goes with the Minnesota, Minnesota start. You know, I had a video earlier this week where I was talking about my favorite targets in every single round of fantasy drafts. And I said, if you leave the first round with a couple Minnesotians or one of the Minnesotians, 
Cook or Jefferson, I'm going to be feeling pretty fucking ripe. I'm going to be feeling good. And he got both of them. So we got my man Jordan Reigns representing IDP Army out here. Goes with the quarterback, quarterback start. I just, I can't get behind two quarterbacks. I don't even care if like Russ falls to me or Dak falls to me here at the 209. I'm probably going to fade them. I've seen some awesome players fall to me here and... And there are a couple of guys I got my eye on right now. I'm getting more and more into the idea of just really diversifying your team up top. See, I can grab Russ right now. Most of the mocks I've done haven't had Russ fall into me here. So it would have been kind of sexy if I were able to start with Russ and like Justin Jefferson. But there are some really, really good players that fell to me. So you have Joe Mixon down at the 209. I like Saquon a lot. Y'all know that. Um, Stefan Diggs, a guy I'm in love with this year. I have moved Diggs over Demonte Adams. And this is a start that I'm kind of hoping for. I'm going to go with Diggs here because there's almost no way that Diggs falls back to me at the 3-4. However, when you look at the running back landscape, I'm comfortable with, you know, Mixon, Chubb, Saquon, Aaron Jones as my RB1. Now, it's possible they don't fall to me. And I'm kind of stuck sitting here without a real RB1, and that would be kind of devastating. But I think given the chance that there's six picks before me and there's four running backs that I like and there was only really one or two wide receivers that I would love up here, I will take my odds with that. I think Russ has is a guarantee to be one of the picks here, even though Tony only goes running backs, running backs. Like That's like the only thing. His team's going to end up being terrible. Watch. Kid can't pivot. Kid can't pivot. He's got like a broken ankle. No flexibility. All he does is bench press in the gym all day, every day. Okay, there we go. We got the quarterback wide receiver. He's going to take another running back because he's an asshole. Here goes Aaron Jones. Or no, nah, he's gonna go to Javante Williams. Watch. Oh, he takes no elbow Stafford. Herbert Barkley. I really like this start by Owen Barr so far. Let's see if he messes it up. Give me Aaron Jones, baby. Give me AJ the GOAT. I'm gonna I'm going to try something crazy if Aaron Jones goes uh drafted here. If he gets drafted. Hey, okay. So we have our choice of Chubb, Aaron Jones, Javante Williams. CD Lamb sitting there looking fucking double cheeked up. I love Mark Andrews as well. I'll be honest, if Aaron Jones had gone off the board there, I think I would have I think I would have really taken a hard pivot and went to Mark Andrews. I'm getting way too unnecessarily high on him. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Aaron Jones, my RB1. Um, and I like the start. I like the start thus far. Aaron Jones is a guy that even with AJ Dillon eating into his workload, Jones is gonna be so diversified on the field. I just I I imagine him racking up like 40 receiving yards a game pretty much. I think he's going to end up being top five in receptions, targets, and receiving yards the running back position, which, you know, helps his floor tremendously. It's just going to be a very uh, condensed offense, I think. And most of the production will probably come and go to the running backs. So what this does here is it allows me to go anywhere I want in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Have you Had you gone running back, running back, you know, or quarterback, quarterback, you really only have a couple. You only have a couple options. You only have a, a few routes to go. Like right there, FF and Brews went wide receiver, running back, running back. He's going to be forced into picking quarterbacks when it gets to the fourth, fifth round. Where I don't think I'll see that pressure. Obviously, my running backs are not going to be super ideal, but I have looked at the ADP, and I think once we get to rounds like seven, eight, nine, we'll have uh, we'll have the ability to grab dudes like yeah, I'll stack up AJ Dillon. I don't give a shit. Uh, AJ Dillon, I think we can still get even later all the way down here. You can see Rashad Penny, Chase Edmonds, Ramondre Stevenson, Damian Pierce are all guys that I'll, it's almost like a hero RB build is the way I'm kind of looking at the strategy. I'm probably going to go into the draft with, wow, Jordan's just going full fade on the running backs. It's if you, if you end up fading running backs in the first round, like that, you know, that one, two turn, like he did going quarterbacks early, you kind of put yourself in a position where you have to fade running backs because there's. It, the the value at like the 31142 for RBs depending on if you don't like Zeke then you're not drafting running backs pretty much because the rest of them are just absolute dead zone dudes James Conner, Brees Hall, Akers, Montgomery, ETN are all dudes with like massive red flags sure like one or two of them can hit but you put yourself in a position where you're probably drafting dudes you don't like so he just went ahead and said fuck it I'm going to take wide receivers that I know are good at football Mike Evans falling to the 4-4 is beautiful wow Rye Dog went with Kirk Cousins there too so he's got the Minnesota 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 Stike quarterbacks ripping off the board here FF and Bruce said fuck it I'm just not going to take a quarterback at all that's going to end up being a mistake so I, I think I found the strategy that I really like wow fuck I was really hoping Pittman fell to me here Kyle Pitts sitting there at the 4-9 looks absolutely disgustingly appetizing. I don't know if I'm getting suckered into liking Kyle Pitts more than I should. This is not a tight end premium league. 
So I don't know if I want to go there. We do have to start three wide receivers. You know what? I'm going to stick to my guns. Uh, I'm I'm going to stick. I Keenan Allen feels like a tier ahead of everybody else for me here. Actually, Mike Williams is on the board too. I didn't even realize that. But regardless, I'm loving the start so far. I would have really liked Pittman there. Most of the mock drafts I've done, I've been able to get him at 4-9, but this is about around where he's going in super flex drafts, and I'll be trying to grab him there every single time. What I've, what I've found so far is that when I leave the first three rounds with a quarterback and a running back, the middle rounds of just stacking wide receivers gives me really, really good players at all three wide receiver spots as well as both of my flex spots. I actually love – I don't even care about fading the running backs. Like, watch, Tony's going only running backs – I think I'm going to end up like my team way more. Like I, I don't, I do not like that start right there. The Brees Hall Cam Akers start are two guys that I'm really, really unsure about. Uh, I like Zeke more for a lot of the same reasons that, um, for the same reasons that we are in on Aaron Jones with the weapons being gone. The same thing with Zeke, man, in Dallas, they don't have a lot of pass catching weapons there, right? They don't have Gallup right now. They don't have Armari Cooper anymore. So a lot of the targets are going to just be. I, by default, go to the running backs. Kyle Pitts still. All right. All right. All right. I'll take Pitts if he falls back to me here. No, I won't. No, I won't. I got to stick to my guns here, guys. Ah, Kyle Pitts in the fifth, though. In the fifth, though. So I could take Terry. I could take. You know what? Actually, I, I, I like Pitts here. I like Pitts here. Because, listen, if you're going to give me. I don't want to say Terry is replaceable, but most of these guys are going to average around 12 half PPR fantasy points between 11 and 14. And that's kind of replaceable all the way from uh, Terry all the way down to, like, let's say, Darnell Mooney or Rashad Bateman. I don't think they're going to finish that far apart. Kyle Pitts, though, this is a positional scarcity where at the tight end, if you're going to if you're going to decide between multiple spots, if you're going to decide between tight end and wide receiver, a high end tight end, which is what Kyle Pitts could be this year for sure, is far more um far more valuable than a wide receiver three. So we're building out a well-rounded team right now. Through five, we have Mahomes. You can see the roster on the bottom right here. Mahomes, Aaron Jones, Stefan Diggs, Keenan Allen, Kyle Pitts. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, I think if I were to do something differently, I might have taken a stronger RB1 here. For instance, if Kamara falls to me there, I'm probably taking him. I might have thought to go Barkley over Stefan Diggs. I know a lot of you guys might disagree with that, but I feel I feel stronger about Saquon as my RB1 than I do Aaron Jones there, and I still would likely be able to get either CD or Diggs. And obviously I want Diggs over CD. Probably unlikely he falls to the 3-4. But what do you, who do you guys like better, Diggs and Aaron Jones or Saquon and CD Lamb? Actually, when I say it out loud, I think I like Diggs and Aaron Jones more. Uh, we took Keenan, just falling there to the 4-9. I really wanted Pittman, but, you know, we'll take it. And then Kyle Pitts sitting there at 5-4 is another guy that I'm okay with. It looks like uh, tight ends continue to fall. Let's look at that ADP there, actually. Where have tight ends? Where have the tight ends been going? Uh, so typically Pitts has been going off at the 4-0-4, and I got him at the 5-4. So I got him a full round after his bash ADP right now. Uh, and then you have Darren Waller and um, – Darren Waller and Kittle going off at the 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, but they are dropping more in this example of the draft. This is why we mock, though. This is why we mock. <laughs> this is a 20-team, a 20-player draft. This is a 20-round draft. I'm going to break down all of the intricacies of the bash in a second to pitch you guys because, again, if you're watching this on Sunday, August 21st, this is the last day to get into this league. AJ Dillon at the 6-1. All right, I won't be able to get him. But, yeah, we'll be targeting. See, the thing is, like, once we get to the 6-9 here, you still have so many good wide receiver options. You'll still have, you know, Judy, Cooper, Godwin, Robinson, Amon Ra, Darnell Mooney, Rashad Bateman, not all of them, obviously, but you'll have a lot of really, really solid options. Elijah Moore somehow still fucking slipping down here, um, whereas the running backs are just disgusting. Gibson, Dobbins, Mitchell, Clyde, Kenneth Walker, Miles Sanders, Damian Harris. So I will probably wait another two rounds before I even look at the running back position. Dallas Goddard is the tight end that I'm really, really targeting heavily. If, if I don't get like the pits here at the 5-4, I'm likely fading it until Goddard drops me in the 7th or 8th round. That's typically been my strategy. Uh, I think Goddard's going to fucking eat with Jalen Hurts. Ooh, Matt Ryan in the 6th. Nice. Nice first get. I forgot I have to get a second quarterback. I honestly don't even – I don't hate Mac Jones. I don't hate Jameis Winston. I probably need to grab a quarterback now because I'm going to end up with like the Daniel Jones, Jared Goff tier. Oh, these wide receivers are so beautiful, though. They're so 
fucking cheeked up. Jones, Winston. I kind of like Winston, man. I kind of like Winston over Jones now. You guys are going to say Justin Fields. Fuck no. Justin Fields. I, I ain't really going to try to predict an injury, but he's going to take more hits than any other quarterback in the NFL this year. It's 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 bar none. It's on site for real. Like. This dude is dropping back, even in the first preseason game, he was pressured on 40 percent of the dropbacks. The the offensive line is so bad in Chicago. He's going to live under pressure, man. I don't know if he's going to make it out alive. Like, it's cute that he could scramble, but damn, Tony getting waddle dropping him at five two is it's precious. It was a good start for him. And now he could actually build a pretty strong team. It's just tough because you got to start three wide receivers. I'd rather have like three real strong wide receivers and then just stack those in the flex as well. Godwin is a dude that I'm I'm kind of targeting in the seventh round. I think he's going to be so strong in the second half of the year. Like so, so, so strong. I'm a little bit worried about the injury, obviously. We like we like players two years removed, but I had Dr. Jesse Morse on the channel a couple weeks ago, and he said he's not too concerned with Chris Godwin. He thinks he'll be a second half of the year breakout player for sure. Still hate all the running backs. So we got our QB2, which is cool because we could wait on a dude like Jared Goff or Davis Mills until like the ninth or tenth round. We definitely want three quarterbacks. Nice, nice, nice pivot there, Tony. A little questionable on your quarterbacks, though. Uh, Stafford's elbow scares me. I don't know who you're going to get as your QB2. And we still have a nice little, uh, we still have a nice, a nice little pickings of, of wide receivers here. I'm not really – I was hoping one of these on the turn here, you know, the Amon Ra, Allen Robinson, Rashad Bateman, even Gabriel Davis fell to me. I don't love Cooper. Like, I don't, I don't really want 12 weeks Jacoby Brissett, so I'm kind of off Cooper unless he falls another round. Mooney's going to be a target hog. I did just talk about how Justin Fields is probably going to get hurt at some point, so that scares me for a little bit. But I think I think Mooney – I think Mooney's going to be a problem. What I might do is go for Mooney and see if D Hop drops to me. Uh, but I actually think I like a lot. Eh, we'll go Mooney. You thought, bitch, you thought Tony was probably talking to TikTok live right now saying, Nick, about to time out. What's Nick doing in his? I'm doing my fucking taxes, dog. I'm doing taxes out here. I'm running a business and I'm drafting Darnell Mooney at the 7 4. Mooney's a target hog. I, I don't necessarily love him. Um, but I'll take him as my wide receiver three. I think he's a guy who's going to get eight to nine targets a game. This is not how I thought this was going to play out, to be completely honest with you. I think I think me taking Kyle Pitts at 5-4 was a mistake. He needs to ball out this year to really be that guy. I think looking back on it, I would have rather had like Terry McLaurin or DJ Moore or Marquise Brown as my wide receiver three and then grab Dallas Goddard down at the 7-4 or 8-9. I think I got to stick to my guns on that one. I just, I don't know if I see a ceiling in that Falcons offense with Mariota under center. And I know he passed the ball to Delaney Walker sometimes. Like it's, it just, it's just not there for me. The offensive line absolutely stinks. Drake London is going to be uh, a big target hog as well. I don't know. I just, I don't know if I see it. I want to see how far Dallas Goddard falls because had I gone DJ Moore or Terry McLaurin at five, four still took Winston there. And then at seven four, got in either Mooney or I probably should have won Elijah Moore. I think I I think I like Elijah Moore more than uh, Jonah Mooney, and got in Elijah as my wide receiver four, and then still been able to get Goddard or Ertz or someone like that. Man, yeah, I, I just I just I'm having such a hard time getting on board with early round tight end right now. I, I do like Andrews at three six though. Andrews is probably the guy I'd pull the trigger on if he falls to me in the third. All right, let's talk to Bash a little bit. Some of you guys are probably new here. So the bash is one of the perks of being in the BDG3 ecosphere. So the BDG3 pass is our first crack at uh, NFTs. Me and Animal and some of the guys in the office are uh, actually probably just us two, but we're we're very into NFTs. I, I absolutely uh, love the technology behind NFTs and how it attaches us to you forever because of the hashtag blockchain. And a lot of you guys just say like NFTs are a scam which uh, that just doesn't make sense because if there's utility, it, it's like if you own, if you're a holder of the BDG three pass, we're giving you X, Y, A, B, C, X, Y, and Z. So if we're giving you utilities and value with it, I, it doesn't make sense that it's a scam. People are just like robotic and I don't under, think they understand what they're saying, but on this site, BG three X, Y, Z, all the information about holding the pass in terms of the utility, uh, in terms of what you get from it, um, it's all here for you. We're going to be doing like tailgate meetups. We're going to be doing parties at bars during the NFL season. Uh, I'm going to be doing monthly content creator workshops where it's 
people hopefully that are content creators want to come and ask me questions. Obviously, the Big Dog Bash. Uh, the Big Dog Bash, all the rules, league settings, everything is laid out on this tab right here, Bash. Draft order, draft time. Uh, draft time will be next Sunday, August 28th at 6 p.m. Damian Pierce, the 8-6 is beautiful. Ah, fuck. Ah, fuck. All the running backs are ripping off now. Is Elijah Mitchell about to fall to me at the 8-9 as my RB2? Come on. Oh, no, Elway's going to take him because he has Kamara. He needs another running back. Don't do it. Don't do it to me. Come on. Yeah! Yeah! Let's fucking go. You're going to give me Elijah at the 8-9? That's fucking huge. Why are you taking Clyde over Elijah? Biggest mistake you live. Um, yeah, so this is all here. All the scoring settings and everything. The way this is going to work, again, it's a regular. You're, you're, everybody's in. Um, how many people do we have right now in it? Uh, let's see. Number 559. So it's divisible by 12. Uh, we'll probably look to. Yep. See, I could have gotten Goddard there, though, and taken a different wide receiver regardless. Um, we'll end up landing between like 45 and 50 leagues altogether. Each league is going to be a normal 12 person league. You're going to be facing off against your other league mates in the first 11 weeks. And then there will be a championship game in week 12, you versus, you know, if you're in first place, you play the second place and vice versa. Um, the champion of that will move on to the big dog bash. The big dog bash will be all of the league winners playing against each other in the last five weeks of the season. So there will be, you know, whether it's, whether we decide to let the top two in from the regular season leagues, maybe there's 40, maybe there's 45, maybe there's 80, whatever. If you're in the top half of those scores for week 13, you move on to week 14. If you're in the top half of the scores that are remaining for week 14 to 15, eventually it's going to narrow down from like 40 to 20 to 10 to five to two. And then the championship week is just going to be a good old fucking fashion fantasy football duel. Uh, see, this is the fucking value pocket of the century right here. This is actually probably where I should take Rashad Penny because I don't have another running back. Uh, but I think I would rather, honestly, I think I'd rather some of these wide receivers. Oh, I can get the Jameis Alave stack here. Guys, You stacking is like, stacking is such a uh, an unlock in, in redraft leagues, man. You really, really, really got to be stacking. The best options right now for me, uh, I'm probably going to end up going with um, – Olave because I have Jameis Winston and I want to stack on my team. Wouldn't be mad about Renfro down here. Wouldn't be mad about uh, Christian Kirk at all. I think he's going to lead the Jags in receiving. Even Alan Lazard, who I'm not like super high on, is probably a good pick because he's got the upside of being the wide receiver one there in Green Bay. Robert Woods is um, Robert Woods is probably going to be the wide receiver one in Tennessee. Sky Moore gets interesting because Nicole Hardman is banged up right now. So I want to see what. Um, I want to see um, what happens there. He can get, if he can get on the field for sixty to seventy percent of the snaps. I think he becomes a smash play. Um, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of Alave. I think there is. I, I really think Alave might out uh, out produce Michael Thomas. I'm not gonna lie. There's just too many red flags around Thomas right now. I just don't trust the situation whatsoever. I just don't trust him. Um, the other thing to note. The other thing to note with the big dog bash is. So those last five weeks, right? Basically. Um, we're drafting 20 players on our roster, right? We're drafting 20 players on our roster because once week 13 hits, no more waiver wire moves. So 20, a 20 team roster is enormous because we don't have defenses. We don't have kickers. So you're getting a shitload of players and you're playing against a lot of people because they won their league. A lot of these teams are going to have a lot of the same players on it. So you kind of have to gear up for the last, um, five weeks of the season, which is where bye weeks come into play. So you have the Indianapolis Colts, right? You have Jonathan Taylor, you have Michael Pittman, you have, Matt Ryan, who are all going to have week 14 buys. Uh, you have Christian McCaffrey as a week 13 buy. So if you get into the actual, into the bash, like you're going to have some of your big time players on buys. So it might be worth looking at players who might come back or come, uh, come out strong over the second half of the year, come out strong the last five weeks of the season, AKA Deshaun Watson, maybe like a Jamison Williams type who you'll probably be able to get very, very late. So this is a tournament of, uh, a lot of research, a lot of preparation. If you really want to do well here, I don't, I do not hate my team whatsoever. I don't think there was a pick that I necessarily whiffed on. You know what I mean? I feel like by this point in the draft, I'm like, ah, fuck. Like I made one or two bad picks. Uh, I don't, I don't look at my roster and say like, Hey, that was a bad pick. That's a bad player. You kind of reach on that guy. I, I think I have a well-rounded team right now. If you look at the roster, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Jones and Mitchell Diggs, Keenan Allen, Darnell Mooney, Kyle Pitts, Chris Olave, Jameis Winston, 
And then we kind of start riding the bench and see what we can get here. Probably going to be shooting for some high upside running backs. Um, so we'll see if I don't even, I don't hate Kareem Hunt down here. Pollard, Kareem Hunt, Rashad Penny for sure. I don't hate Melvin Gordon either as like a flex play you could throw in there. Darrell Henderson's a guy that I'm targeting late in most of my drafts for sure. I think it's going to be a committee there between him and Akers. I like Kenneth Gainwell. Y'all know I love Khalil Herbert. Brian Robinson looks to be a guy that you got to be targeting now that he's like overtaking fucking Antonio Gibson as a starter. Pacheco's an obvious target now with the amount of run he's getting with the ones. And I do have Mahomes, so that could be another little stack right there. Pacheco looks to be super involved in the passing game so far. Both preseason games with the starters, as soon as they get down to the red zone, he's been uh, he's been targeted down there. I could see him ripping off like three to four receiving touchdowns this year. He's got a good amount of uh, of dudes in the queue right now. Zach Ertz falling all the way down here kills me. It kills me that I took Pitts here. I'm gonna have to run a bunch of mo a bunch more mock drafts right now. Not right now, but this week before the drafts are on Sunday, and um, and see what the tight end situation is like. Because if I run these drafts and I continuously just get Goddard in the seventh, eighth, or Ertz in the ninth, tenth, I'm gonna feel pretty. I'm gonna feel all right about uh about fading a guy like Pitts if he falls to me in the fifth. Oh, uh, let's see. See, there's still so many talented wide receivers, which is why I'm like, do I go with Melvin here? I think I have to because I need I need a uh, running back that's actually going to produce if we put him on the field. Now, some of you guys might like Miles Sanders here. I'm sketched out by that whole situation in Philly with Miles Sanders. So I'm going to go with Melvin here and know that if I put him into my you know flex or RB2 spot, I'll get a, a solid eight to 12 points out of him probably on a weekly um but i do like like i i all else equal if i didn't need running back help i like woods a lot there i like russell gage a bit yeah i, I would say my draft so far is not as strong from round six through ten as they have been in my previous mocks with this but there's nothing that i hate about it but yeah the bdg th three pass will give you the opportunity to join the big dog bash uh we have tons of you know prizes that we're going to be giving away weekly monthly the grand prize again is i mean your choice of a five eth which right now is probably worth about uh t 10 to 12 grand i think or ten thousand shares of bdg which is going to be worth about 10 to 12 million dollars in like five years um and yeah, I mean, this, you could check all this out on bdg3.xyz. And if you're interested in getting one of the passes, you'll have to do it fucking ASAP. You just click the Mint Now button up here, and I'll take you here. You could buy it uh, via your credit card, man. We just rolled that out as a feature like two or three days ago. We didn't know it was possible until two or three days ago because a lot of you guys were very confused about the whole ETH and Coinbase and NFT process. So if you, ha if you got ETH, you could still grab it via your MetaMask wallet. Um, if you're connected, you should disconnect if you want to buy it through credit card, but y'all can do that. And then uh, and you can hop in the Discord and we will help you out with everything that you need going forward. Um, it's going to be fucking awesome. It's going to be all the content that we make in 2022 is going to be based around the uh, the big dog bash. It's going to be fucking cool. So after we had a big running back run there, Gordon, James Cook, Miles Sanders, Michael Carter. I'm not, I'm not going to take any of these running backs right now in the queue. Because I just think there's more value. Even Zach Ertz sitting there at fuck. Why is he sitting there in the 11th round? I want to go with Robert Woods. I think I'm just going to take Ertz, man. I think I'm going to take Ertz. I think with Hopkins suspended six games, Kirk gone, Chase Edmonds gone. I mean, it's going to be a funnel to Hollywood and Hollywood and Ertz in this passing game, man. I think I could use Ertz as a flex play if I needed to. And we very well might because, again... You're starting two running backs. You're starting three wide receivers and two flexes on top of that. This is crazy that Ertz went at the 11 4. I'm about to, I'm almost ready to rank Ertz over TJ Hawkinson, to be honest with you. Let me see where I have him. Uh, oh, I actually got to update my rankings today. Now that I think about it. Oh, I do. Hell yeah, Nicholas. Good job, sir. So I have Ertz as my tight end eight. I have Hawkinson as my tight end nine right now. That's legit. All right. That's cool. Um, those rankings are in our draft guide. If you've been living under a rock, you can get, you can get that at bdg.co. Um, uh, but the easiest and the least expensive way to get it is by going to prize picks, prizepicks.com, or follow the link down below. That'll take you right to the app store. And if you deposit $10 or more using our promo code BDGE, you're going to get a 100% deposit match. Plus our draft guide for free. 
So you got a lot of utilization with that shit. And we're going to go to prize picks probably around right around 15 and see what preseason plays that we like for today's games to, to bring home some revenue. Here's what you do. Deposit 50 bucks on prize picks. Wait till we hit round 15. Use the play that I'm going to use on prize picks today. You're going to triple your money, and then you're going to have enough for a BG3 pass. How big is my fucking brain? I don't know how my brain fits under the hat and the headphones. It's one of the world's greatest mysteries. All right, back to the draft. So I went Ertz. We had Cole Komeko off, Rashad White, Baker Mayfield, Tyler Boyd, Coral Patterson, Brian Robinson, Traylon Burks, Dawson Knox, Naeem Hines, Chase Claypool, George Pickens. Ooh, that's interesting. We have Claypool and Pickens going back to back there. I think Brian Robinson at the 11 10 is an absolute fucking steal. Really good RB4. That's probably who I I forgot he was so far down the uh the the rankings there. Forgot all about him. Jameson Williams, interesting pick given the late round or the late season uh necessity in this type of tournament. So if we look at FF and Bruce, who went wide receiver and running back early and kind of faded quarterbacks, he ended up with three of them. Matt Ryan, Daniel Jones, and Baker Mayfield. I think you could probably make that work. I think you could probably make that work. I think he's got a strong team otherwise, though. Um, if Javante Hillian, if, if Javante Williams hits right, I mean, Swift, Javante, Pierce, I love. But Cup, Sutton, McLaurin, Elijah is a really, really nice four-way at wide receiver. We're back on the clock. Um, why are you guys starting? I want no parts of y'all. All right, see, I'm glad we fade the running back because we still have a lot of those dudes available to take. Do we take another quarterback here? Uh, I think I'm. I think I'm. What I'm going to try to do is grab two of these running backs. I think we're going to grab Darrell Henderson first, and then we'll see who of these three fall to me. Right now, I'd probably rank it this way, but I'd be fine with any of them: Pacheco, Herbert, Gainwell. Ah, Deshaun, Deshaun, Deshaun. I was I was curious to see where he ended up going in these drafts. So he went off to the 12-10. He's obviously suspended 11 games. They have their bye week in there, so he won't be back on the field until week 13 against, of course, you guessed it, the Houston Texans. Can't wait for them to, to move that to a primetime game. Like, there's no reason in God's earth that a Cleveland Texans game should be televised, but you know damn fucking well it will be. The, uh, the boos that are going to come out of that stadium are going to be deafening. Tony out here picking fucking backup quarterbacks. You love to see it. I hear Tony scrambling. I hear him yelling about Jahan Dotson. Sebrin, you just, you just loaded up an absolute long-distance automatic rifle on the top of a roof and domed Tony. Am I just going to get my choice of these running backs right now? Ah, fuck. Just as I'm talking shit about him, he takes the guy on top of my fucking queue. Yeah, we're going to take uh, Herbie. We'll take Herbie here. Oh, fuck. I'm not even up. Oh, sheesh. Thought I was about to get domed as well. All right. All right. All right. So now we're cooking a little bit. Now we're cooking. We've got our wide receivers. We've got our tight ends. We've got our quarterbacks. And now we're starting to put a little something, something together at the running back position. We've got Aaron Jones, Elijah Mitchell, Darrell Henderson, Khalil Herbert, Melvin Gordon. I think we can make it work at RB2 behind that with that. Is Noah Noah more parties? Oh, it is. It's Noah more parties. Noah Hills, how you doing, buddy? Let's see what bullshit you put together. We got C Mac at the 106, Dak at the 27. Is anyone worried about Dak besides me? I'm not worried about the skill players because this is going to be a super condensed offense. Like CeeDee Lamb's going to get a zillion targets. Zeke's going to get a good amount of targets. I like Tolbert and Schultz. I, it just feels like when you lose these weapons, you know, Cooper and Gallup and stuff, like it it will impact the it will impact the um the quarterback. So it's not like I don't like Dak, but I feel like uh and there's no way of knowing that Tom Brady's gonna last, you know, a round and a half after that. But I think the delta between Pratt uh Dak, Stafford, Tom Brady, Kirk Cousins even, is just not high enough for me to want him. Like I, I don't think I could justify taking Dak over Kamara or Saquon or Diggs. So, no, honestly, just so bad by you. Just so bad. Like, just 
not many words I could put together. I like the Andrews pick at 3-6. Higgins at 4-7 is a steal, obviously. DJ Moore five 5-6 is nice. T-Law. Yeah, T-Law, sure. Juju at 7-6. Chase, of course, he took fucking Chase before me. 8-7, Kirk. I, I like the bottom of the draft, what he did. Yeah, he took Gainwell after me. Woods there, yeah, that's nice, that's nice. I like uh, everything from, like, round 8 down to 13 is pretty sexy it's 1140 oh my god i've already had three full full ass cups of coffee and this is this ain't no fucking like oh here's a little splash of coffee in the morning that has like 80 milligrams of caffeine these motherfuckers are full ass cold brews with like 250 milligrams i'm 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 fucking diced up right now we're only in round 14 sheesh you can do this all day huh MVS, Albert O, Josh Palmer, Jacoby Myers, Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett down at four, round 14 is kind of sexy, dude. He's getting on the field at some point this year and probably earlier uh, than most expect. He's been looking fantastic in preseason. All right, let's 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 uh, let's cue some people up. Gage, wow, Gage is really dropping, huh? Nobody wants a part of him. Uh, it's hard to take Spiller seriously right now because it looks like Josh Kelly has the edge for... Running back two, Gallup will be back late. And see, that's uh, that's a guy I guess you can get a little bit excited about in this type of format. I don't know if I was like excited about Gallup to begin with, though, which is what makes it hard for me to be excited. And this is another reason I should have just faded tight end because we got Higby and we've got Njoku, both guys I'm higher on the consensus here, sitting ready to be scooped up. Do we have a QB3 yet? No, we don't. Okay, we might need to go with the QB3 here. Ugh, am I going to have to go with Mitch, ah, oh, fuck. Oh, boy. I put myself in a little bit of a pickle here. Oh, good dra Good spot with Romeo Dubs. He's just taking all the guys everybody fucking forgets about. This is bullshit. Isaiah McKenzie, hell yeah. We're going to put his ass in the cure. I think I'd actually rather, rather have McKenzie than uh, Gage right now. Is there anyone we're forgetting about? Ah, dude, Mike Davis, is he's going to be the best late-round pick in this fucking league, guaranteed. Yeah, we'll take McKenzie here. He's going to be the starting slot receiver for Buffalo. He should be scooped up in like the 13th, 14th, 15th round of every fucking draft. McKenzie's won that job over Jameson Crowder. What do we need right now? How many? We have three, four. Do we only have four? No, we have five wide receivers. We have five running backs, two quarterbacks, two tight ends. Uh, I'm going to have to take another quarterback here. There's no one that's even like semi-juicy. Mitch would, I guess Mitch would have to be the guy right now. He's got the offensive weapons. I just don't, I don't know if he's going to stay on the field for more than six games. Jimmy needs to get traded, but that feels like it ain't happening right now. Even if he does get traded, what has he got? Like two weeks to learn a fucking entire playbook. Not looking good. Jacoby will start for 11 weeks, but he's terrible. He's going to put up like 13 fantasy points per game. And at that point, I would almost rather fucking put a position player in the flex. Drew Locke absolutely stinks. Ah, man, Drew Locke might might have to be it. But he's going to get benched at some point, too. Desmond Ritter. Uh, Mariota's probably got that job for a while. Tony No Dimes just took two big dudes that stink at football. Alec Pierce and Kenny Galladay. He's auto-picking. I hear him fucking sighing out in the office right now. Russell Gage at 14-10 is just insanity. What I might do is go with – I might do something ignorant here and go with Mitch. Go with Mitch and then possibly Desmond Ritter on the on the way around. Because I think Mitch will probably get benched eventually. And I think Mariota probably gets benched eventually as well. But probably not till late in the season. So basically I'm going to try to time it up and there's no shot that I do that successfully. We'll get into the 15th round. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, let's look at some prize picks right now. Again, make sure you deposit using promo code BDGE, and they'll hit you with a 100% deposit match. NFLP, they've got uh, multiple entries if you're into, you know, if you if you want to fucking hit the player props hard. NFLP is NFL preseason. Uh, NFL by itself is the first week of the NFL. Uh, did they? Yeah. Uh, the first week of the NFL, so like week one, Stafford versus Buffalo, 280 passing yards. I think I might like the under on that. Actually, that's probably just going to be a shootout. And then NFL FUT is NFL Futures, so this is season-long props, and we've absolutely fucking nailed these. We've nailed the shit out of these throughout the summer, so you guys can go check those out if you want. Let's look at uh, let's look at some preseason stuff. 
I don't think Jalen Hurts is going to play at all. So I think Minshew will get an entire first half to himself. So we're going to take the over on that. You basically just want to bet based off of um, snap counts. Like if a quarterback's going to get an entire first half, you know, he's probably playing that first half against second and third string defensive backs as well. So, you know, you look at that as, hey, 88 passing yards. If he can go over, you think he can go over 170 in a full game against backups? It's like, yeah, probably. I think we're probably back on the clock. Ah, sheesh. Just take Spiller here. I fucked up. I would have probably looked to take Jeff Wilson here, who's the number two in San Francisco. Um, has Mike Davis been taken? Fuck. Should have taken Davis. Should have taken Davis. God damn it. That's who I would have taken, assuming he's not taken already. We put him in the queue. Fuck. See, I would have taken Davis. We're going to pretend I took Davis instead of Spiller, and then we can move on to the wide receivers because we love some Paris Campbell. Honestly, has Sammy Watkins been taken? Sammy Watkins is going to be a starter for Green Bay. Sammy Watkins is going to be the wide receiver three there, and I feel like Rodgers is just going to love him because he's just a fucking veteran. It's disgusting. But I'm going to take Campbell. He's explosive. He's the wide receiver two there right now. And, uh, and Matt Ryan's my fucking boy, dude. Have a day, Tony. You are just, what are those wide receivers that you're doing over there? What in tar nation? Oh, we're bike. Uh, yeah, we'll take, we'll take Paris Campbell here and move it along. I love Kyle Phillips as a late round guy as well. at The tight end position for Tennessee's fifth round rookie who has been super impressive and he's just got a lot of hunt for Hunter Renfro to his game. So we're going to take Gardner as our first play. And then I love taking the quarterback overs on rushing yards too. Oh, is Kennedy Brooks going to get a lot of run today? Or is that going to be all Jason Huntley? We're going to take Tyrod Taylor over seven and a half rushing yards. He's going to play uh, probably a lot of that first half. They've projected for 80 and a half passing yards, which tells me they probably haven't projected for uh, the first half. And Tyrod's, I mean, he's not what he used to be as a runner, obviously, but seven and a half is literally one scramble in the entire first half. So we're going to throw down a light yeah, 59 because I fucking typoed it, but whatever. Gardner Mitchell over 87 and a half passing yards. We're going to go Tyrod over seven and a half rushing yards, and we're going to slam it. Yep. That's my favorite pick today, even though I didn't even look at the other play picks. I'm fucking locked. I'm going to run to the bathroom. I will speed this part up for y'all. And we're bike. I thought I was going to have to make a pick while I was peeing. Tony, 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 you took the wrong Baltimore running bike. Gus ain't going to be ready for week one. I Honestly, I don't know if Dobbins is going to be ready for week one. I'm telling you, Mike Davis is that dude for like one week. One week, Mike Davis bringing home the butter. They got his prop up for week one. Let, let's see if they got any Baltimore props up for week one on prize picks right now. Got no rushing props up. Oh, we're seeing a string of just fucking absolute shit running backs go off the board. Mike Davis, Trey Sermon, Jeff Wilson, Hassan Haskins, Josh Kelly, Dearness Johnstein. Uh, I might take Ritter here now, but I still kind of want to. Oh, Watkins is sitting there at two. I think I'm going to take Watkins. I want to load up on skill players, like really load up on skill players. Although going back and looking at this draft, I think you probably, because it's 20 teams and you're going to need a lot of depth going into the end of the season, you're probably going to want at least three quarterbacks and at least three tight ends. I think that's probably the safest way to do it. And then you could split 14 other roster spots between wide receivers and running backs. I would suggest probably going an 8-6 split because you need to start three wide receivers. So maybe eight wide receivers and six running backs. I think that will that will leave your team with uh, a pretty good mixology of of uh of depth of players of yeah it'll, it'll leave you with a good mixology of players all right we've kind of fast forward that last round we'll talk about it in a second we are bike up on the clock for our last one and uh i'm gonna go with phillips i actually have no idea what the makeup of my team is right now in terms of uh, players Hayden Hurst is interesting I think just straight up as the starting tight end in the Cincinnati Bengals offense is the only one really on this list that still intrigues me Brevin Jordan's kind of cute I guess if you want to try and get cute but nah. um, yeah so I, I like Kyle Phillips so this is how the roster ended up turning out you guys can see it on the screen right now Mahomes Diggs Aaron Jones Keenan Allen Kyle Pitts Jameis Winston Darnell Mooney Elijah Mitchell Chris Olave Melvin Gordon Zach Ertz Darrell Henderson Khalil Herbert Isaiah McKenzie Mitchell Trubisky Isaiah Spiller Paris Campbell Mike Davis Sammy Watkins Kyle Phillips and there you have it that is the entirety 
of the 20 rounds for the big dog. Bash. Everybody's draft spots and league numbers will be revealed on Monday nights. Uh, we're going to be doing a reveal party. I'm not sure exactly what time, but we will keep everybody in the loop in Discord. So, again, if you have any interest in grabbing a pass, you have probably the next 10 hours, I want to say, by the time this goes live. You could do so at mint.bdg3.xyz or just go to bdg3.xyz to find more info. Everything in the Discord, though, you could drop any questions you have for us. Um, as for the team, again, I think uh, looking back on it, I would have rather have faded Kyle Pitts there, taken my wide receiver three. Wait, am I am I am I nuts right now? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Did I have a dream? Why is this just coming back to me right now? Hold up. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. I knew this did happen. Damn, I thought that was yeah. I'm 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 a sicko. I'm a fucking sicko for thinking this would even happen in my dream. Khalil Herbert got carted off at practice yesterday. And I remember being like, oh, David Montgomery is going to fucking somehow back himself into like a top 12 running back finish again by just not even being good. But he was back at practice and participating, participating today, even after um, carting, getting carted off practice yesterday. Sheesh, that could have been really bad. Uh, okay. For some reason, I thought that was in my dream. Looks like it was not a big deal. Love to see it. So, yes, I would have probably swapped. Even if I swapped Kyle Pitts, I, honestly, the, the best workaround for this would have been to have taken Derek Carr at 5-4. Derek Carr, 5-4. And then taken either of the guys that went after me at 6-9, Robinson, Amon Ra, or Bateman at 6-9. Then I would have my QB two. I would have my wide receiver three. I could have taken whoever I wanted at seven four, whether that was Mooney or Dobbins or Elijah Mitchell or Chase Edmonds, and then still gotten Goddard at eight nine. That would have been fucking beautiful. So I think the only part of my draft that I did not love whatsoever is really that five to seven, maybe eight ish range. Had I flipped a few things around and not gone Kyle Pitts at the five, uh, I would have liked the makeup of my team a lot more because I was still would have been able to get Goddard at eight and Ertz at nine. Like, give me Goddard, Goddard and Ertz over a fifth round Kyle Pitts right now. Um, otherwise, I mean, the rest of the team looks good to me. The diversity up front gives you a lot of flexibility as your team moves down the draft board. And um, it sucks because I talk about this out loud and then everybody who's in, who ends up revealing their NFT art and gets in, in my league is going to know how I'm attacking this thing. Unless, unless. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for hanging out with me today. I'll probably wrap it up here again. Uh, if you want if you want the draft guide, go to prize picks, deposit with promo code BDG. If you want to get in on the big dog bash go to mint.bdg3.xyz and you can grab that sheesh with your credit card all right i'm out of here i love you guys very very mediocrity lee and i'll see you tomorrow monday goodbye